In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create your very own animated profile picture. That's right, a profile picture that moves. And I'll show you how to use that profile picture on different platforms like Gmail or TikTok. Let's go. What is up guys, Ronnie here. Welcome back to the channel. This is the best place for you to learn about Canva and all sorts of creative tools. Today I'm coming at you with a step-by-step -step tutorial to create your animated profile picture. So without further ado, let's jump into Canva. I have 10 steps for you to create your moving picture. Okay, so this is my Canva home screen and the first step is to simply select the right format. So you are going to go for a one by one aspect ratio. Let's go for the traditional Instagram post. So for that, I'm just going to start from the social media button right here. Click on that and then go for Instagram post. You see 1080 by 1080. That's exactly what we want. Step number two is to decide on what background you will be using for your profile picture. Me, I like to stay consistent with my personal brand and also the visual identity I have created for that brand. So if you know me, you know that the bright yellow is my main, my dominant color, but I also like to play around with gradients. And I'm thinking for this profile picture that a nice radial gradient, so radial meaning the light kind of diffuses from the middle, of the gradient would look nice as the background of my profile picture. And I have one particular gradient in mind, and that is the gradient that is on the thumbnail of my Canva master course, which is my best selling course on Udemy. So I want to stay consistent with that. I want people to associate me with that course and to reinforce that I want to use the same background. This is kind of like a subliminal message, but still, I think it's a good move. So let's go fetch that background background. I'm going to use the project button here to navigate through my different Canva folders because I know I have already created that thumbnail with Canva. So it shouldn't be too hard to go find the thumbnail and then bring it to this design and then get rid of everything else. So in my case, this should be under my folders. And from here, I have one which is called Ronnie's Courses right here, Canva Master Course. And here it is. This is the thumbnail of my course. So I'm going to click on this. You'll see all the different versions. So probably something you've never seen before because only this one is the official thumbnail. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply get rid of everything else. You see, getting rid of that, getting rid of the color here. And this is the gradient that I want to use. Okay, so the only thing I need to do is to stretch it so that it covers the entire one by one photo. So there we go. I have my radiant gradient for my background. And of course, you can pick any solid color. You can create a gradient. You can use texture or you can use patterns for your background. It's really up to you. But the only thing I would suggest is that you stay consistent with the visual identity you have chosen for your brand. Okay, so now we need a visual for our profile picture. So most definitely, I would recommend you use a photo of your face, right? It's your profile picture. Unless you want to use a logo or something else in that range of ideas, I personally like to use my face on my profile picture. So I'm going to go to this folder right here that I have with a bunch of different photos and select one that I want to be using for my profile picture. I'm going to be using this photo right here. I think my expression is pretty cool and I have a nice haircut on this photo. So let's use this one. For this next step right here, I'm going to need a Canva Pro feature called Background Remover. If you're not a pro user, don't worry, don't freak out. You can still achieve a similar result without having to upgrade to Canva Pro. You can use a website called remove.b to basically remove the background of your photo. So that would work. If you are an iPhone user, you can also achieve that result by long pressing on your photo and then copying that photo. It will kind of like extract you from the background and paste that into Canva. So there are different ways you can today get rid of the background of an image without paying for Canva Pro. Now, that isn't to say that Canva Pro isn't awesome. Trust me, Canva Pro is well worth the price. And I'm going to leave a link 
link in the description of this video for those of you who want to give it a try. We have this 45 days free trial that is 15 additional days than what you would get on the Canva website for you to try Canva Pro. This is our affiliate link and it will be right there in the description of the video. Now, of course, you don't have to go with the exact same style of photo that I'm going to be using. Maybe you are fine with just some of the elements that are in the free Canva library. You don't need Canva Pro to achieve your animated photo. But for me, for this specific idea or concept that I have in mind, I'm going to be using the background remover. So let's go. I'm clicking on that photo, click on edit image and then background remover. Canva is going to work its magic and just simply get rid of the background. So there you go. I have no more background. Do not click on anything right here or at least if you want to follow the exact same technique that I'm going to be using in this tutorial. Because what I want to do is to really isolate that head from the rest of my body. So I'm going to be using the erase button right here. I'm going to click on erase and you should see your cursor change into this eraser right here. You can also change the size of your brush. So I'm going to be going for the biggest brush available. I'm just going to clean around my photo without going too close to my face right now. And now I'm going to resize that brush to make it much smaller and work on the details right here. I can zoom in to actually see what I'm doing here. And this is probably the hardest part of the tutorial. So you need to kind of contour your face without messing up too much. Whew, that's a high precision job, but the, the better you do this, the better the result. So here I messed up a bit, so I need to correct that. Okay, not too bad. And now moving up here. Now, if you screw up at this stage, Okay, you can always use the command Z functionality, you see, like this, to undo a specific part that you just messed up. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to show you that. So I'm going to go and do this again, right here. And it's, it's so, you see, I messed up here, command Z, and I do it again. There you go. Okay, so it is not perfect, like I, took a little bit too much here. So I could probably restore a little bit. Okay, I'm pretty happy about this. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the done button right here. Don't forget to click on done, otherwise you will lose all of that work. And last step to complete this background removal is to click on apply right here. So Canva should just take a second, process that photo, and then you should be good to go. I've seen Canva reacting and there we go. This is the result. I can resize this. I'm just going to make this frame around the photo just kind of like the right size. All right, I've moved my background here a bit. So in order to avoid the background here moving, I'm going to position it correctly and I'm going to lock it. So now I can move this image around and the background will not move because it has been locked. You see the little padlock icon right here is closed. All right, let's move on to the next step. My next step would be to add an outline around my face so that we can hide the imperfection of the detouring, but also make as if this head was popping on the page. So in order to do this, first I'm going to resize this to make it bigger, okay? I want this to be quite big here in the middle because at the end of the day, this is what you will see in a very small profile picture, profile bubble, okay? So I don't want it to be bigger than the safe zone, but I want it to be considerably bigger on the profile picture. All right, so this is what it looks like at this stage. I'm gonna make sure I click on the photo to select it and then go to edit image. And now I want to find the shadows, okay? The shadow effect right here, click on it. And what you want to select is the glow shadow, okay? Click on glow and then click on the little uh, slider button right here to access the settings of your shadow. Now, I like to use a 12 point size shadow. You see the shadow here? 
around my face. So that's what I'm uh, working on right now. Transparency, I like to keep it to 85. So not very transparent. It's not completely solid. And for the last slider right here, the blur, uh, if you go all the way to zero, your line is gonna be straight, like no blur. It's gonna be completely uh, plain, I would say. And if you go all the way to 20, you will have the largest blur, the largest diffusion around uh, that outline. I'm gonna go for something in the middle, maybe six. Yep, six looks nice. It gives me that nice popping effect that I was looking for. So once I'm happy with this, I'm just gonna click on apply. So there we go, we have the base for our profile picture. Now let's work on animating this photo. The way we are going to animate this photo is to simply duplicate the page and start adding some movement to my face. So let's go ahead and do this. The first thing you will need to make sure of is that you have your thumbnail view here activated. So it might be that your document looks like this. Just click on the little arrow right here to expand the thumbnail area right here at the bottom. Next is you are going to select your page number one and then you are going to duplicate that. So you can go with the three little dots, duplicate page, or you can simply uh, command C or control C, control V to create a third page. I'm gonna delete the third one for now and just going to concentrate on page number two. So the thing here, I want to have this little head movement like so, kind of like the Indian head shake that I've never mastered myself. So I'm gonna use Canva to try to recreate that. And then I'm gonna add some other kind of motion to the animation. But let's start with the head shake. So uh, for that, selecting page number two, selecting my image, and I'm simply going to rotate my head to one side. So maybe minus eight degrees on this side. Okay, so next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back to normal position and tilt the other way. So normal position will be page one. So if I select page one, control C, then I move to page two and paste, control V. Now I'm back to normal, okay, normal position. Now, duplicating this one once more, page four, page four should be eight degrees on the other side. So there you go, like so. And then I'm just going to repeat this process, adding frames, so now back to the middle, like so, and then I can basically copy page two to five. So I select them all, you see, select page two, hold my shift key, click on page five, and now I have two, three, four, five selected. Command C to copy them. I go to page five because I want to paste them after page five, command V. And now this is what I have. If I quickly go through them, I have one. So this is my animation so far. Okay, so this is a good start. I want to have this head shaking thing going on, but now I want to take it a step further. I want to go full circle here and rotate my head entirely, like a 360 degrees right here in one direction and then probably the other direction, and that would be the end of the animation. So in order to create this, we are going to use the same process of copying my page and then slightly rotating. And I believe we can create the entire rotation, so that would be three. 360 degrees in 10 pages. So we will need to move or to rotate my face by 36 degrees on each page. Just like starting from the previous position and then adding 36 degrees to the rotation. All right, so let's quickly do that. Okay, so this is the first page right here. So I'm going to select page number nine and command C, command V. There we go, so there. I'm gonna be using my good old calculator to add 36 degrees to everything I'm doing here. So just simply using the calculator. So the first 36 degrees are gonna be easy, just moving and you see in black here, I have the number of degrees. So go to 36 like so, and then you copy page 10 and then from here you add 36 degrees. So 36 plus 36, 72 degrees. So I need to go to my 72. There you go, adding 36 to that, that's gonna be 108, but make sure you copy your page first, then you go to 108. Oops, not seven, make sure you are exactly at 108, plus 36, that would be 144. Copy the page, come here, 144, 
like so. Copy the page plus 36, that would be 180, so just the middle. And we are already at halfway here. Okay, so this is good. And now, copy my page again. And now you see, if I move in this direction, I'm back to the same number, so it doesn't go like over 180, it goes back down from here. So I know the number is already 144. All right, so I should have 10 images between 9 and 19, and we do indeed. Now, what I'm going to do is to simply make the head rotate in the other way. So for that, I'm going to start with 18, then 17, 16. I'm going to go the other way around. So another trick, another keyboard shortcut I'm going to show you, if you hold your Option key on Mac, you can also duplicate. If you hold it down and grab a photo and move it, can duplicate that photo, that page. So I'm going to do that with 17. Just make sure you bring your pages at the right uh, position right here. So 22, now 15. There we go. So I believe we have 29 pages and that should be the entire animation. So let's click on page one. So let's use our keyboard arrows and just go left, left, left to just move from one page to the other and see what the animation looks like. Starting with the Indian head shake and then the rotation one way and then the other way around. All right, this looks cool. What do you think? All right, we have covered the hardest part of the tutorial, which was to create the stop animation. Now, let's tweak this to make it a little bit more exciting by adding some animations on the first and last frame, okay? So I'm gonna click on page number one right here. Click on my face and click on animate, okay? I want something like that, like the pop thingy going on. This is pretty cool. You can choose any of these animation, maybe stomp. Yeah, stop looks good. And I'm gonna make sure I animate this on enter only. This is important, otherwise it would look a little bit weird. So on enter, okay. Now, I have this. I don't want this to last five seconds, not at all. I want this to be maybe one second. Okay, one second. Next, if I click on page two, or page three or whatever page, you will notice that the length that the animation stays on that specific page is also five seconds, which is way too long. I want all of the other pages right here to be the shortest time possible, okay? So if you uh, drag the slider all the way to the left, you will see that point one second is actually the shortest time you can stay on one specific page. So I'm gonna do that, go for point one second and also apply to all pages, okay? Like so. And now you see that page one also has point one second. So I need to go back and change it back to uh, one second. Okay, I think this will be good. Now the last thing I want to do is to go fetch the last page, this one right here, and to also animate it. Okay, I'm gonna click on animate, go for stomp, and this time I'm gonna make it on exit. The last thing I need to do from this last page right here, if I click on the little thumbnail here, is to change the duration from 0.1 second to one second. Okay, I believe this is all good. My total length of the animation is 4.7 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that play button. Okay, that looks cool. I like that at the end, my face disappeared. Let's play that again. Okay, this looks good to me. I'm gonna close the preview right here and I think we are good to go. Our animation is ready. Now we have to download it in the right format so we can upload it. The first place where I want to upload this and absolutely try it out is Gmail, okay? So for Gmail, I did a little bit of research. You need to export that animation in the GIF format. So let's go ahead and do this by going to the share button right here download, uh, I'm gonna change mp4 video for GIF. Make sure this is all my pages, size 
I don't think we need to mess with this for now. And I'm just going to hit download. All right, my file has downloaded. It's right here. I should have given it a name. So I'm going to change this right now by renaming my uh, document right here. I'm going to call this animated Gmail profile photo, profile photo. Okay. All right. So let's move over to Gmail and see how we can upload this photo. All right, guys, we are in my Gmail account. Obviously, I don't want everyone to see my private life. So I've blurred out pretty much everything here. But uh, I want you to pay attention to this little profile picture right here in the corner. So you're going to click on this. And in order to change it, very simple, you need to click on that little icon right here, the camera icon. So click on that and you will replace by clicking on change right here. And here, uh, I'm gonna select from my computer, upload from my computer. Uh, this should be in my download. So this is the one right here, the GIF one. So it's gonna upload into Gmail. And there we go. My profile picture is ready. It looks great already. Look at this, beautiful. So save as profile picture and there we go. I think we are good to go here. Look at this. The profile picture is ready. It could take a day or two to see the changes across all your Google services. Okay, I got it. So I am not completely sure it will be immediately available across my emails, but it looks like it's already here. See, if I click on the profile picture, it shows my new animated photo. Now let me try to send myself an email and see how it looks like from my phone, because this is where the magic should be happening. So let me just do that quickly. So yeah, looks beautiful. Uh, from here, we can see the little profile picture I just uploaded. I sent myself a test email so that you can see how it looks in there. It looks great. It really catches my attention. So this is what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. And don't go anywhere. I have one last step for you, and that is to upload that same moving profile picture on TikTok. I did a bit of research and I found out that in order to have a moving profile picture on TikTok, you need to have it in the MP4 video and your video needs to be between three and six seconds long, which is great because our video is 4.7 seconds long. So all I need to do is to download this animation from Canva again, but this time in the MP4 format. So let's go ahead and do this by clicking on download. I'm gonna click the GIF here and choose MP4 video. All pages, that sounds good. I'm gonna download this again, but this time in a video format. All right, my MP4 file is ready. It's downloaded, it's right here. What I'm going to do is to airdrop this to my phone so I can continue to set up this new profile picture on TikTok from my phone. And by all means, if you have an Android phone, you can transfer that file to your phone or you can maybe use the Canva app to download the same video into your phone directly. It's really up to you. There are plenty of options. All right, guys, I have my video on my phone and I want to upload this to TikTok. Now, the first thing I recommend you do, especially if you are an iPhone user, is that you go into your settings, you find TikTok, the app TikTok, and you allow TikTok to access your photos or a couple of your photos. On iPhone, you can decide which photos specific app will have access to. So I need to give TikTok access to this photo if I want to be able to use it. So for that, I'm going to go to my settings right here and scroll down all the way to the T's and find TikTok. TikTok. Tapping on this, tapping on photos, selected photos. So allow photo access to what? To all your photos, to none or selected photos. I chose selected photos and you can edit which selected photos. So I need, you see the second one right here, five seconds. This is what I need to give TikTok access to. So click on done. All good. Now I can get out of here and go to my TikTok profile. So this is my TikTok profile. I'm going to refresh quickly. And in order to change your profile picture, simply tap on edit profile, change video. And now I can select that video, which is my moving profile picture and save. And TikTok should be saving your video. And now you have edited your profile. It is updated. And there you go. It looks great on TikTok. You can go out there and make some damage.
And that's it guys, I hope you liked this video. Give us a like if you did or subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. I'm gonna leave you with this other video right here to create something else very awesome with Canva.